The Legend of Jimmy Spoon by Christiana Gregory, Chapter 20, Lecture. Dawi! Nampa and Gamu called. When they saw how slowly Jimmy was walking, they laughed. No one is going to hurt you. You are defending yourself. Jimmy felt better. As they rode into camp, Washaki approached them. Light from his campfire played against the side of his face. Jimmy tried not to stare into the deep scar below the chief's cheekbone. Never run off like that again, Dawi. I was afraid of a big fight. Come to me next time. There is only more trouble when you run from a problem. Jimmy explained how Poog had been tangled. Jimmy explained how Poog and he had tangled. A boy tied to a wild horse does not make much fun for the boy, Washaki said. It happened so fast and I was so mad I didn't think about it. Always think, Dawi. Jimmy rubbed the toe of his moccasin in the dirt. Poog's neck is scraped raw. He could have died. His parents are very upset. Serves him right, thought Jimmy. He was still mad when he saw Poog moping through camp. Jimmy felt sorry. He gave him half a smile, but Poog sneered and turned away. In the teepee that night, Jimmy lay in his robe, exhausted. Washaki visited with old mother. They talked, thinking he slept. Maybe Dawi isn't happy with us, old mother said. Her hands worked quietly over a new pair of moccasins as she spoke. When he ran away from camp, I knew he must have thought of his other family. I knew his. I know his white mother thinks of him. Washaki let the sound of the fire fill the silence. He looked at Jimmy's sandy hair and felt a rush of tenderness. They were brothers. Jimmy began to doze. He had avoided thinking about how his white family might feel, but old mother's words filled him with longing. He pictured the cottage, how his mother was up before everyone else before dawn, working in candlelight. Since it was Jimmy's only chance to be alone with her, he would often rise early just to sit near her, sleepily stirring the batter for hot cakes or filling the cast iron muffin pans. By the time father awakened, loaves of bread would be baking in the iron stove. Mother would be nursing baby Lucy, and Molly would be setting breakfast on the long oak table, the aroma of fresh coffee filling the room. Clara would pour milk from a pail into the blue pitcher. Jimmy pictured nightfall. His sisters would clear the supper table while Mother rocked Lucy's cradle with her foot and held Annie and Rose on her lap for lullabies. Emma and Francis would be jumping on their corn husk mattresses, and Nan would be stitching by firelight. Jimmy would fetch water and food for morning and then do his reading lessons. By the time they rolled into bed, father would already be snoring in the four-poster while mother washed the dishes and pots. She didn't use soap. That way, at dawn, the dishwasher could be fed to the ho the dishwater could be fed to the hogs. Then she would blow out the last candle. Old mother and Washaki sat by the fire, still not speaking. Jimmy wanted to sleep now, but there was one last picture in his mind. His sister Olivia. He remembered how excited she had been to marry Thomas Methersmith and start her own family. He remembered the horrible day Olivia died, just a few hours after giving birth to her first baby. She had been 17. Jimmy shuddered at that memory. A sharp stab of guilt made him sob into the fur. His mother had lost Olivia. He hadn't really considered her grief, and now she'd lost him too. And that's the end of chapter 20.